combi is 50 and the uh, pamp is 25. Wow. They are hiding the inflation. Uh, they're controlling the price of silver without any question. It's the government that is a problem. And you know this last bill they passed is is really outrageous when you're in the middle of this kind of inflation. Again, these things you think would be positive for gold and silver? Oh, anything that's really bad is positive for gold and silver. You're all mic'd up now, Tim. And I'm mic'd up too. Hopefully I don't get a lot of complaints about people saying they can't hear Tim anymore. Oh, stop it. You didn't want me to clip it on you because you thought I, it was going to report to the IRS. Yeah, it looked to me like a tracking device yeah. or a target. And I'm, is there anybody across the street who can, nobody with a rifle over there, is there? No, there's nobody over there. Business is crazy, really crazy. And, you know, we're, we're not getting a lot of cooperation from some government agencies. Um, you know, we all know about the problems the U.S. Mint is having in getting product out the door, mm -hmm. <clears throat> which makes the prices go up and up and up. Um, but I, my, I close the store at six and they mm. take all the packages over to the main post office, you know, the largest post office in New Hampshire, which is supposed to close at seven. Uh, eight times in the last two weeks, they've closed earlier than that. So I go all the way over there and then I can't mail their packages. So I started to take my packages to a local post office over here in a different town. Um, but it, it's very annoying because I get calls from customers who want to know what the hell happened to my package. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, You're getting a lot of business here. I, I, I see a lot of all boxes. All those boxes have got to go out. Oh, man. Yeah. That's and good. um But, you know, the ones I, I'm able to call back, <laughs> I mean, the people... People are very polite you know, under difficult circumstances. When you, you send your money and you're waiting two weeks and you don't see a package come in. And, you know, they've got this answering machine that when it fills up, oh, I know. it starts to search for space. I hate that phone. Can so, I just say, I, I, I'm going to do the same thing that I did with a calculator with that phone. Uh, the little ones, I sent three kilo bars in one yesterday. And um, boy, do I have to put a lot of tape on that box. <laughs> and so, and you uh, send them registered mail. Yeah, reg definitely registered. Absolutely, mail. and yeah, which right. is safe. But they, they, we had um, a delivery uh, last week. All the coins. This came from a wholesaler. All the coins were loose in the box. Mm. And you know, it was American Eagles and Buffaloes, and you know, I've had. To, Sort them all. I've got to go through every coin because they asked me to take pictures of the ones that are damaged and they replace them. But it was, you know, 200 eagles and um, I guess, well, the order was 400 buffaloes, but they weren't all, they were, only some of them were mixed. Mm -hmm. But they, they put them in a, um, a, it was a, a Krugerrand, a silver Krugerrand monster box, but didn't tape the top down. Oh, so there was enough of a gap that when the package went upside down, everything came out of all the tubes. Oh, that's awful. And um, you know, it's not, not really their fault. I mean, these yeah. these people are really busy. Yeah. You know, it's and half of their their problem is finding the silver and gold. Speaking of which, what's what's hot right now? I see some I see some interesting gold in here. Oh yeah, I I still have more, but um, yeah. what I had in there sold today. Platinum. Uh, two platinum tents. Mm -hmm. And I have bars, like one gram bars, stuff like that. 25 cents? Quarters? Quarters and dimes, yeah. Quarters. That was what the last customer oh, yeah. was looking for. Good. Um, and I have a question from one of my viewers for okay. you. Well, it's got to be an intelligent question there. It, it, it is. Sometimes I get really dumb questions. But not from my viewers. For you. No. Oh. Okay, so this is not for me. This is one of my oh, viewers. Be a very intelligent question. Okay, <laughs> uh, but it's a hard one. What events would precede gold and silver really taking off? And that's from a societal standpoint, an economic standpoint, a political standpoint, uh, you know, fiscal monetary standpoint. I I think that everybody down there in New York, you know, the financial capital of the world is on edge 
right now. Um, they're trying to keep the money in in the process. Let me put it that way, because uh, that's the only way they can make any money is to keep money moving in New York. Mm -hmm. You know, they can take it out of one commodity and put it in other another stock, or they can buy short this or short that, whatever. Um, what they don't want is for the money to disappear from the markets. And I honestly think that if uh, this election in November goes bad for Republicans, we could see a lot of changes immediately, immediately. Mm. And if uh, the financial markets don't look good, and they don't look good right now, uh, because they're hiding the inflation, uh, they're controlling the price of silver without any question, and any commodity that uh, is has industrial uses that is in short supply, they'll be controlling. Um, but I think when they when they get panicked, that's when everything changes. And I don't I don't know, you know, they they they're so rich and there's so much money going through all these firms. I mean, it's trillions of dollars are being traded every day. Um, it's the government that is a problem. And you know this last bill they passed is is really outrageous when you're in the middle of this kind of inflation to be spending you know more trillions of dollars and you know on um, on uh, oh green energy deals well, mm -hmm. like what mm -hmm. like what yeah. oh well solar panels and windmills and um, you know the whatever that deal in Paris is going to cost us I mean they can't tell you what it's for that is a theme. So uh, that's that's what I'm most concerned about is the politics. You went right to the politics. I'm not surprised. Right the politics. I know you. Yeah. Um, the other the other one that is really going to cause a shakeup is uh, if the and I think Europe is already settled on what they want for a digital currency. Um, the problem with the digital currency at the central bank level is you've got to get agreement from all over the world. You can't leave anybody out. They want to leave Russia and China out. Okay. And Brazil doesn't want to be left out, but I mean, they are, they really would like to partner with Russia and China. So mm -hmm. if they come up with a, a global digital currency between central banks, and that's not saying anything about the currency in each country, right. but then there's no reason to have a reserve currency. The yeah. biggest problem in the world right now is every country in the world is bankrupt and there's no mechanism to pay down their, right. their uh, debt. But if you have a digital currency, at least it can be manipulated on a global scale. And you know, by that I mean, if every country agrees to a certain digital currency, then every country will say, okay, well, you, you spend, you take a trillion off of your debt and we'll take a trillion off of ours. I mean, it's that bad. It is. It is that bad. They, they, there's no way. And the other the basic um, reason for worldwide debt is Politicians have no business negotiating contracts. I'm talking about union contracts, uh, contracts with private industry. Politicians have no business negotiating contracts because they have no skin in the game. Okay, It's not their money they're spending. Again, these things you think would be positive for gold and silver? Oh, anything that's really bad is positive for gold and silver. And yeah, I'm most concerned about the COMEX letting, letting silver go. I'd like to see silver trading at supply and demand. And it's got to happen eventually. Why put it off? What ultimately causes them to lose control? Well, I'm, I'm assuming that they, the, the requirement to have some physical silver backing up trades is the, the root of the problem. Because uh, if you have a situation where... Um, you know the metals all of a sudden become really important that makes the problem that the comex is facing even worse because people are going to be buying more contracts and um i mean they can set the bid price always because that's a con that's a price at which they buy back contracts they can always set that price um but what about but, the derivatives markets all the spoofing oh, all the hypothecation everything the, the naked shorting Everything all is, that everything has long been out of control, out of control. And um, I mean, you, you want to just use one thing. What about the derivatives of um, petroleum, which, which is everywhere? Everything you touch every day has some input from petroleum. 
And, you know, we have a president who said, well, as I made my campaign promise to, you know, put the fossil fuel business out of business. Yeah, they're getting there. But uh, you do that, and then you <laughs> suddenly don't have any electric car. Why don't they understand how connected thing, everything is? What about the societal challenges that we're facing right now as a nation? And there is a lot of them. What, yeah. what, what, are there, is there anything there that you see could be a tipping point for real money? Oh, boy. I'm saying not yet because they always have the ability to print more. And, you know, when they had to have, have hold a stress test, prior to the stress test, they printed lots and lots of cash. And then suddenly when they have this stress test and everybody, all these banks pass with flying colors. I mean, I think that's connected. Uh, you know, I don't think it's coincidental that you print a lot of money and the banks, you know, what is a stress test? It's the ability to, of the bank to survive a run on the bank. If you're, you're going to a bank, any bank, and you're taking your money out, I want my, I'm going to close my accounts. They'll say, well, we can, only thing we can give you is a bank check. I don't want a bank check. I want cash. People aren't going to take bank checks. So if there's a run on the bank, you know, they've got to have enough cash to survive. And they just printed a whole lot of cash, like a year's supply. And suddenly the banks are all passing stress tests. I think it's related. Run on a bank. What would that do to gold and silver? Uh, it would bring a lot of more people here exchanging cash for gold and silver. Yeah, which puts me in another difficult position with my bank. Did I tell you they raised the fee? Yeah, you did. Um, That's just unconscious. I don't. I don't know if any, any of the community that follow Yankee Stacking are aware that we've been paying a fee to deposit cash in the bank, and it was a tenth of a percent for every dollar in cash that we deposited was taken out of my account for the bank. Okay. They just raised that fee two hundred and fifty percent. Now it's a quarter of a percent of every dollar cash that I deposit is being taken away from me. Um, Think there's uh, a war in cash? All they're doing is making people, it's driving people to cash. That's all they're doing is driving people to cash. When I tell people that I got to pay to deposit that cash, they're shocked. Mm, they say, How can yeah. that possibly be? How can you take money for money? But that's what they're doing. And, you know, in addition to lots of other fees you know, that they, they're taking out of our accounts every day. Uh, you know, it's, that part of the banking community is, is um, it's in a, a state of turmoil. Because I don't think the tellers understand when they're asking you, how do you intend to spend this cash? Yeah. I don't think they understand. It's not their business. From a societal standpoint, what do you think the possibility is that what divides us is far greater than what unites us to the point in which we see a, the balkanization of our country, eventual secession and a breakup. Um, boy, it's a hard one. I, what worries me the most is the number of people who are taking benefits from the government and relying on those benefits, uh, because I think there could be a serious problem down the road. But we have a government that says, you know, okay, we're going to pay everybody's student debt, mm -hmm. and you know, and we're going to, you know, we're going to build a green industry, you know, using taxpayer dollars, and you know, one of the schemes I heard about in, in lowering uh, prescription drug prices is you steal from the taxpayers, you go to the pharmaceutical company and say, what will it cost us for you to lower your prices ten percent, and they give you a number, and so they pay pharma to lower prices. I mean, that, that is what they normally do. Uh, it's like, you know, if you've got a, a, you know, climate activists who are helping you get elected, then you got to pay them back. And there's, there's way too much taxpayer money going to useless causes. And that, that's going to make people figure out ways of paying less taxes. Uh, we had a revolution over, or at least partially over taxation without representation. We did. So we, yeah. And we... It's, it's getting back to that on a global scale because um, countries around the world can't collect enough taxes because they're, 
They have too many government giveaways. Okay, food. That it's, can cause civil unrest. We're waiting big for, time. you know, we, we heard rumors about, you know, food shortages. I haven't seen it yet. Although I, you know, I did buy a bag of oranges that I think were last year's oranges. <laughs> have you started eating bugs yet? I haven't started eating bugs, and I, I don't plan to. Uh, if I ever think about possibly eating bugs, then I watch uh, Naked and Afraid, or whatever that show is on the Discovery Channel, and that cures me of any desire to eat any bugs or other things that crawl around. Oh, thanks, Tim. I appreciate all those candid answers. Um, what do you got for some silver? Yeah. Let me see here. Okay, you can take this. I know exactly what's in here. And at your leisure, look through that bag and tell me what the heck you would do with it. Okay. I love how he says, uh, I know exactly what's in there. Like, I will take a look at this. This will be fun. It'll be a lot of fun. Thanks a lot, Tim. release the fact that I have these because they won't last long. Oh, that's interesting. The combi is 50 and the uh, PAMP is 25. Wow. Oh, that's that's a, a, a prepper stacker's wow. target. I know, right? Yeah. Very cool. All right.